Hey yo, what's good? It's Dino here and we're back with another video full of crazy clips from all over the world. I hope that everyone's been well this last few weeks. You know, I've been really busy, haven't really been feeling well, hurt my shoulder and my knee and you know, I kind of just been, you know, watching the kids and waiting for that to get better. And also, I've been working on a lot of music, just had a new album drop, so like yeah, that's where I've been. Anyways, I hope everybody's doing well. Let's hop right into it. Hmm. Yeah, they said that was a glitch on their radar. Um, I'm not so sure though. They said it was a glitch and nobody else reported it. A bunch of people are freaking out about it. But at the same time that that was passing through the ocean right there, there was some crazy wind <laughs> that matches along with that thing traveling. Blowing trucks off of bridges and all kinds of stuff. Like, I'm just, I'm just saying. Like, I don't know what that was. They said it was a glitch. But like, I don't know. Sometime in the year 2000, a woman from Japan got married and bought her second apartment home. After living there for the first few days, she started noticing strange paranormal activities happening around her home, like her faucet turning on and even dishes moving around. Her husband didn't believe her, so she started recording and what she saw truly overwhelmed her. After witnessing all these things, she demanded that her husband come over and when her husband came over to pick up those dishes, what the wife saw was truly terrifying, so viewers discretion advised. <laughs> Yo! <laughs> no. No, 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 no. I'm inclined to believe that that might be real. I don't know. Because uh, that's pretty crazy, man. Like, I've seen stuff flying around, but I've never seen the figure that was throwing the stuff flying around. Plus, I was like a teenager. It didn't make sense to me at that time. Read that. So, what is that? <laughs> is it a handful of eels or something? Or is it one creature? Like, I don't know. Everybody deserves health care. <laughs> Be patient with them. They have a point. We need to get a lot more care into the closet. Hmm. Get a lot of this guy. <laughs> oh wait, hold on. 
So what's the science behind this complete reversal of the magnetic poles? They claim that the geomagnetic pole shift is because of the interior, whether it's the iron core or whatever it is, the molten core, does a shift and because of it, that's why the, the compass will flip. This has happened throughout millions and millions of years. This is mainstream science, the poles do flip. But it's not that the earth flips over, it's that the inside core does and so your magnetic compass will flip. It allegedly happens in cycles. The earth's shields will be diminished and we're long overdue. And are there any estimates win. on when this could possibly take place? According to every article I ever read, like, oh, don't worry, it's probably be another thousand years. You have no idea what you're talking about. It's accelerating. But there's other things that happen on Earth, whether it's super volcanoes. What if that's related to pole shifts as well? The reason why we're not seeing the evidence of it is because it flips right back and thus masks the evidence that it ever happened. So it's pretty wild. You guys are freaking me the fuck yeah. out, man. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there you go. What about that? How about that it's not that the poles flip and then everything moves and freaks out how about it's that the poles flip then flip back almost unnoticeably and then the earth reacts to it for like 20 years how about that when am i gonna get paid for the data that you are selling or you're have you're getting revenue from advertisers when am i gonna get get paid for the data you're getting from my children my grandchildren my neighbors I think that's the only way to get your attention is talk about the money you're making and maybe that'll get you all to do what you're supposed to do. I, I respect and understand your opinion. Um, the vast majority of our users have a great experience. I sent a video recently as well. I got hundreds of thousands of comments. But what am I getting? A, it's yeah. a great experience. Yes, that's that's what you're getting. It's a free platform. You're getting a great experience. Yes, you're not going to get paid to sign up with an account and watch videos on a free platform. If you're going to ask TikTok that question, you need to ask every other platform that question. <clears throat> My daughter called me this morning and she was just saying over and over again, Dad, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. <laughs> Dad, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I've, but you see, this is as bad, as bad as this looks, as bad as this is. I want you to see something. You've got to see this. Open the door, Kenzie. This is my daughter. She was in this car. My God. It's an amazing God. She's got a little bit of scratches on her hands, a little bit of scratches on her feet. And that's all. I serve an amazing God. If you don't believe in him this morning, you can look at this. That guardrail is on the driver's side. She crawled out the back window. And she was in the road when I got here. My God is amazing. He is amazing. Do not ever try to tell me something like that is just a coincidence. God is awesome. We have breaking news. Law enforcement sources tell ABC News federal agents have seized a number of electronic devices from two properties associated with Sean Diddy Combs. This after federal agents raided two homes connected to Combs in Los Angeles and Miami. The rapper and hip hop producer has been accused of sexual assault and trafficking in multiple civil lawsuits, all claims he denies. Look, we've all, all of us. It, it, that do these videos all of us who are watching these videos and trying to bring this information out all of us we've been avoiding this this whole diddy situation for like the last year and a half we've been avoiding it as much as possible just you know sitting back because we don't want to uh, step in the wrong areas or say something wrong but like all this stuff coming up now I'm just saying. Hi. Are you following me? No. My bad. <laughs> yeah.
that's weird. That dude's been in quite a few videos and put all over the internet on blast for doing this stuff, though. That's weird. I've been retired now for 10 years. He says, before I retired, I was in the Advanced Systems Division of Lockheed Martin. And we were dealing with something we called modified field propulsion. A variable field, he said. Of course, he began to lose me immediately. I didn't regret his talk, what he was talking about. Matter-antimatter conversion. Exotic field tension. Wormhole. He said it will modify time and space, and he says we have had transluminal flight for over 30 years. And I had to stop again, and I says, hold it. Transluminal, hyperluminal flight. I says, you're talking about faster than light, for God's sake. He said, yeah, we've had it now for 30 years. Now this is from David Froning, who'd spent, you know, biggest chunk of his life as an advanced systems engineer for Lockheed Martin. And then we get the material from uh, Ben Rich. And somebody said to Rich, he said, Ben, what the hell are you really talking about? He goes to the blackboard. His big dinner for retirement, I think, was one of the major hangers over there. Blackboard, he goes up and he writes, uh, unfunded opportunities. They say, what the hell are you talking about? He takes the chalk and he circles U, F, and O. And then he left the stage and walked out the door and they're all thinking, good God, what this man's lost it here. <laughs> Unfunded opportunities, UFO. Mm -hmm. What he was inferring and saying literally in their face, yes, we have reverse engineered technology from alien craft. And we're flying it and it works. And we can take E.T. home. Now, one of the reasons I get so ticked off, you have to forgive me here, I, I'm getting old. I, I don't have the patience I used to have. Mm -hmm. The rumor has been going around that I've turned out to be a, you know, a mean, rotten old fart. <laughs> Cynical, you know, grumpy. Well, that's not entirely true. I like to think, as Henry Higgins said, that I have the milk of human kindness by the quart in every vein. But I can't really pull it off. I guess I am getting kind of grumpy in my old age. Guys, I'm getting angry. I really am getting angrier every day when I think about the con job that's being pulled on you and 300 million other Americans on a daily basis where they are literally conning you to the point they're taking you to the cleaners they're stealing you blind and then they're lying to you about it mm -hmm. damn sure are they really are and you know you can't really say anything about it because when you do you get ridiculed you get put down you get called all these weird names you get called like anti this anti that it's just you know yo what the f is that what the f is that what the f is that he sounds canadian what was that somebody walking back and forth in a window I don't know if you know this, but our Earth has had four pole shifts in the past, and we're potentially going to have a fifth, okay? And a pole shift, and the reason why they did this particular thing with the pyramids is because if you look at Antarctica, and you go to Antarctica, and you, you, know, you look at the discoveries there, they discover animals there, right? These animals are frozen in time, perfectly preserved. When they open the stomach, what do they find in the stomach? Undigested food. Why is it undigested? Flash frozen. Flash frozen. So what does that tell you? Antarctica moves into that position. So as tectonic plates bump against each other, sometimes you have a subduction plate where one plate goes under, sometimes you have a, uh, I'm sorry, a subduction plate that goes above and one you have a, one that goes under. So 
basically, as these plates bump into each other, and then you have a gravitational field that causes a tug on our planet, which like our brown dwarf neighbor that uh, we just discovered out there in our solar system, when it passes around our sun and adds a little bit more gravitational shift to our, our, uh, our planet and tugs and pulls, and one plate shifts and drops. Now you have an entire continent that drops into an area that's freezing cold, and the animals and everything in their stomachs becomes flash frozen. Okay? This happened before on this planet. And if you look at the volcanic rock on this planet, you begin to realize that there's magnetism in the rock that show that the North Pole was facing south. Every 27,000 years, we have a magnetic pole shift as well. A magnetic flip is going to happen sometime within the next few hundred years to a few thousand years. It's just part of the geology of this planet. It's something that happens. It's part of natural nature. But it happens typically around this 4,200-year cycle when this... Um, this sun, this other brown dwarf star, passes by our sun, um, which is the sun that the ancients knew about. It's not going to crash into our planet or anything like that, but you have to understand, this brown dwarf star is, has the same exact mass as our yellow star, but it's about four or five times smaller. Hmm. Yeah, that's pretty crazy. They're talking about that brown dwarf and how it affects our entire solar system. These mysterious statues are much more bizarre than your normal ancient relic. So in Sierra Leone back in 1991, they were going through a terrible conflict, which was largely due to the control over the country's diamonds. So while one of these mining companies were searching for diamonds, they found these stone statues that depicted humanoids. But these statues were different than the ones that were discovered previously in Sierra Leone because they appear to have the head of a reptile and the body of a human. And what makes this even more mysterious is that these figures were found at extreme depths in the ground. The geological layer that these were discovered in corresponds with a time period between 12,000 BCE and 17,000 BCE. So let's say that this time period is accurate. Who actually made these statues? Well, according to some of the local tribes, in ancient times, some of the angels living in the heavens were exiled to Earth as punishment. And the reptilian statues were supposedly a representation of the fallen angels. Now this next part gets even crazier. One of the men who found these reptilian statues called Nomali was a geologist by the name of Angelo Petoni. And apparently when he was examining one of these Nomali statues, he heard a strange sound coming from within it. And after hearing this sound, he decided to do an x-ray on it and found what appeared to be a tiny ball inside. So of course, he cuts the statue open and he finds a perfectly spherical metal ball. And after the ball was tested, it was found to be made of chromium and steel. And what's really strange about this is that steel wasn't even in production until roughly 2000 BCE as far as we know. Also, chromium wasn't isolated by anyone in written history until 1797. And another mind-boggling thing to think about is that whoever made these metal spheres would have to use sophisticated tools to be able to pull this off. That's pretty wild to think about, honestly, considering the elements that were, you know, used. Um, thank you, Kmart David Duchovny. I appreciate that. That's really cool information. I'm gonna have to go look that up. That road is gone now. <laughs> wow. No, that's terrifying. I wouldn't want to live anywhere that's like that. No, 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 no. I am so happy I'm around a whole bunch of concrete that's been processed so that it can't fall over like that. Mm. Let me go in there. Huh? Let me make sure nobody in here. Hello? See? There go man. There goes. There's a man. See what I'm saying? There's a man. 
know this is the women's bathroom, right? Sorry. This, that's the women's bathroom. A man in the women's bathroom. That's why you gotta go in here with your kids. Make sure, no, let me make sure nobody else ain't in here. Let me make sure. That's why you gotta go in there with your kids. Make sure no man in the damn bathroom. That's wild. That's wild. I mean, his thought process might have been like, there's nobody here, blah, blah, blah. But even still, like, I guarantee you, though, the bathroom had plenty of room, plenty of space, and was not filled with people. So, like, that just ain't right. I, that just ain't right. Okay, so I never, ever keep my closet door open. I hate keeping it open. I don't sleep with it open. I, I never have it open. If you guys saw my previous video, I thought something was, like, standing on the other side and, like, Earlier, I heard like a knock at my door. I don't know if I'm like, I don't know if I'm going crazy or if it's in my head, but tell me that doesn't look like somebody standing on the other side of the door. Okay, so I thought I heard something like fall down here and I came down. I thought maybe it was my cats, but that door just slammed shut. That door is never open. It never stays open. I'm getting my cats and I am getting out of here. <laughs> Finally, somebody who's like me and just says, nah, I'm getting my shit and I'm leaving. We ain't staying here tonight. Finally, that's great. Do you mind if I ask why you do that? Uh... Mm -mm -mm. Bro, that's why you don't go running around at night in abandoned buildings. First off, usually it's trespassing, but second, you don't know how many drifters, homeless people, whatever might be inside what you're trying to go and explore. And you don't know if they're dangerous or not. You really just don't know what you're going to encounter. So the best bet with these kind of things is to actually talk to the owner. If you plan on making videos exploring, you know, their abandoned buildings or their buildings that look abandoned, because that's what it is. Most of these buildings that people go in and explore, they look abandoned. They're not abandoned. Somebody owns them. They just might not have a reason or the want or the ability to fix them up and use them. So, you know, you got to be careful with this stuff, man. There's so many instances of YouTubers and other people like TikTokers and just social media goers that like do this exploring abandoned buildings places and then they end up getting arrested or they end up getting trespasses or they end up, you know, having to run from somebody who's homeless or they end up hurting themselves in the process of getting scared or freaked out or like structural damage that you know isn't safe to be walking around on you know I, I hate to keep going on like this but like it's a very important subject because we don't need our kids running around out here thinking it's cool to just go running around in abandoned buildings it's dangerous was it diddy wants to party but you gotta tell him no oh yeah well you do gotta tell him no <laughs> That's not you funny. No. <laughs> <laughs> you got to tell him no. You got to tell Diddy no. Everybody knows you got to tell him no because if you don't tell him no, he's going to put you in a situation where you're going to have to say yes or no again. <laughs> so just say no. Just say no. <laughs> just, just say no because you know the consequences. That's what I'm saying. She said yes. That's what I mean. She knew the consequences. She said yes. And the next thing you know, she covered up in a mother blanket and he said, come on, baby, it's 100 degrees outside and, and you got a mother blanket on. Let's go outside and run on the beach. <laughs> I was like, this is horrible. Yeah.
don't you got to be careful what you sell your soul for, bro, or what you think you're selling your soul for. You know what I mean? Like you wanted to get ahead. Ain't nobody, don't nobody want you to get ahead. You know what I mean? We're going to make it hard for you. You know what I'm saying? Like they made it hard for me in my hazing ways. I'm not complaining and saying people did this and did that. They did it. But do I really want to see them in jail? No, I was being hazed. I'm being hazed. I'm still alive. I'm still here. I'm all right. Funny like games with my family. Shit. It's what it is. You feel like He's not lying, though. <laughs> He's not lying, though. going to be a pro athlete <laughs> no i feel so terrible for laughing at that <laughs> that child is going to be a pro athlete you know that yo you're like every other pro athlete we were just saturday watching tv and then this happened <laughs> I am calling out for psychics, mediums, clairvoyants, and anyone that is in the slightest bit spiritual. So Lainey for the past few nights has not been sleeping the best, and she's been having some weird, vivid dreams. Like, she legit had a dream, and she's 100% convinced by this, that our ghost Dave visited her. She had a dream that she was driving down the road where we think he died, and he says to her, yeah, that's the place, that's where it happened. And she's also been telling me that she has been seeing people, like fully people, around the house. No rhyme, no reason, just happening. And she's been waking up at the exact same time every single night for about four or five nights in a row now. If you are interested, there is a full video about this on our YouTube channel, where we went into so much more detail about everything. But clairvoyance, psychics, mediums, is this a thing? Can ghosts manipulate dreams? And is Lainey psychically tapped? Stitch this or let me know in the comments. Yes, yes, they can manipulate dreams. Um, if this is the case and this is what's happening right now, um, if this is real, then what you should do is be mindful of the media that you're intaking on the television. Uh, be mindful of the types of entertainment and the types of energy you are allowing within your mind and your subconscious mind. Maybe take a look at the subjects of the TV show that you were watching during the incidents in the videos. Um, as well as maybe look into cleansing your house. Now, just because something might be like, oh, I'm not necessarily negative, uh, you should always assume that it is uh, directly the opposite of what you are told by it because uh, that is the number one thing that dark entities do is they will try to convince you that they are your friend and that they just want you know some companionship or someone to uh, pay attention to them and uh, yeah in the case of the dream where you mentioned that she was visited and uh, was driving past the spot and he was like oh yeah that's where it happened now when these things start to happen uh, it is trying to get you familiar and to feel more comfortable with the presence and possibly even feel sympathetic for it because it feeds on that so like again like i said please if you ever see this video you need to look into spiritual cleansing you need to look into the media and the other things that you are intaking and um maybe make a few changes within you know what you're intaking because that has a lot to do with the surrounding energies around you um yeah good luck 
hi, we're America and we're banning this app because it's a danger to Americans. I would love to know why. We have reason to believe that this app has ties to communist China. What leads you to believe that this app has ties to communist China? It's owned and operated by a Chinese company. Since when do we care that something that we use is made by a Chinese company? When it's a social media app that's in direct competition with American social media apps. TikTok has successfully managed to pay more people for making content than any American app that's ever been created. Aren't you worried about the ties to communist China? Every goddamn thing that Americans use is somehow connected to China. But what if they're spying on you? There is not a piece of technology that Americans use that are not actively spying on them at all times. <laughs> I like this kid. Dude, keep making more videos. That's that's prime. That's prime right there. Keep doing it. Yes. These ball Miren. size hail. Miren nada más. De este tamaño estuvieron cayendo los granizos. It's huge. Aquí en la casa quedó hecha garras. Mira nada más. Qué bárbaro. Hijo de su. Vaya susto, eh. Se escuchaba el techo. Impresionante. Bro, get back in the house. Desbarató todo. Todo. Yo es dangerous. Miren. You need to go inside. Miren. Sabinas Puahuila, señores. Mira esta, mira esta. Miren este. Miren este. Impresionante el tamaño. That's wild. You see the size of that hail, y'all? That, that's huge. And that whole parking lot, every single vehicle was basically totaled, man. The physicists at the CERN facility in Switzerland said they found a ghost. Yeah. I didn't say it. The physicists at CERN said it. They said they found a ghost. Okay, let's look into this a little bit. So they themselves said they found a 4D ghost in the particle accelerator. They measured and qualified an invisible structure that can divert the course of particles and create problems for particle research. Like I said, they're saying it, not me, that they found an invisible 4D structure. They describe this as taking place in something called phase space. The 4D invisible structure is a result of a phenomena known as Renaissance. I hope I pronounced that word right, but I'm a name butcher. They also said the particles don't follow the exact path they want them to, they just fly away and get lost. So I don't know how this invisible 4D structure that makes particles fly in different directions is a ghost, but they said it, not me. So CERN found a ghost in their particle accelerator. Why am I not surprised? Okay, I'm just letting you know. Shabadoo, Bushkies, Shabadoo. <laughs> Keep it up, bud. I love your content. Keep it up. That's some good stuff, y'all. Go look that up because it's actually facts. Oh my god, guys, um, I'm late. Honest to God, it ain't mine, man. I passed out. It wasn't that good for me. And I fell asleep and I was really sick today. And then I see this in the Daily Mail. Okay, and then I run into her video and I have a chronic really illness and, and I felt today. good up until, I to go well, I felt it. like... And then pretty good fine. energetic for some of and lupus sudden, up until the solar eclipse. And, I felt nauseous. I and then she dizzy. talks about I this. Sick. My, my then I come across this guy. Watch this. You, This is compelling. I scrolled across that video. I looked at the comments and there's hundreds of comments of people feeling sick. I then go online all within 
today, 12 hours, 18 hours ago, 6 hours ago, inside eclipse sickness, many claim to be plagued by weird feelings and headaches and insomnia. Always lying to me. Why? You lying so much. Why? Eclipse sickness can sense like asking questions, right? Like all within the last couple hours. But the one thing I do know, the scoffers and mockers came out of the floodgates. Wow. Oh wow, hey, that's one of your little drawings. There you go, pole vault over the thing, here it goes, and there he is. People waited until 12.01 a.m. on April 8th, and they were immediately commenting, nothing happened. It's like, what videos were you guys watching? People having eclipse sickness? Like, again, if I'm ignorant, please let me know if this is totally normal. 2017, people got super sick. I've never witnessed a total solar eclipse, so I don't know, right? But is this normal? So let me know if you had eclipse sickness during the solar eclipse because um, you can't make this stuff up. I mean, it can't just be us. If they catch me, I'll tell them I made it up. No, I didn't have eclipse sickness. Um, <laughs> I haven't had the greatest last few weeks, though. Been really hurt. My shoulder and my knee and my neck have been absolutely making it so that I cannot sleep and can't really do much of nothing um, except for watch the kids and work on the computer. So I, there's that. I don't know. Weekend is when you're weakened from the weekdays. No shit. A daze is someone who's unable to think or react properly. A state of stunned confusion. <gasps> I think maybe I'm a little stoned. Words are spells. This is why we call it spelling. Did you know your subconscious mind takes everything you say as truth? When you use these words, your subconscious mind is picking it up as truth. When you say something is good and say it's sick, you're calling yourself sick. All right, I'm cooler than you are. Words are encoded and they have secret meanings. Veganism saving me. God is good. Listen is silent and love is evil. You can't do this with the ancient languages. This is why they changed it. Because the Bible tells you death and life are in the power of the tongue. Because because when you talk, you create torus fields, which is an electromagnetic wave. We actually live in cycles, which is a circle. The sun and the moon is the yin and the yang on the flat earth. Because if we go there, we'll be able to see that Antarctica is the edge of the flat earth. The psych L is the L, which is the 12th letter, which is the 12 zodiacs. This is the cycle, the circle that we live in. Whatever you do, stop consuming seed oils. Hmm. Okay, see, this guy's got some crazy stuff on his channel. He has like all these crazy things where he's pointing out just random stuff like this. He actually wrote a book and everything. Um, you should go check it out. I'm not really sure how I feel about it. I'm still working through all of his content to try and decide how I feel. But uh, bits and pieces are okay. And uh, other bits and pieces kind of make me go, hmm, I don't know. You guys decide for yourself. Leave me some comments, let me know what you think. It's about to get a whole lot rougher for humanity. It looks like they finally have a date, allegedly, to sacrifice the red cow. It says, Israeli submit request to police to allow an altar and knife to slaughter red cows on the 22nd at Al Aska Mosque. And in one second, I'll show you something extremely weird that happened when the eclipse happened. But this is Al Aska Mosque. It sits right where the second temple, Solomon's temple was. I have a feeling God is not going to like this. What we're about to see is of biblical proportions. At the same exact time, we have Israel taking soldiers out of Gaza because they are about to be attacked by Iran. And while this is happening, other countries are already picking sides because they know this is going to change the world. And this behind me is when the leader of Hamas just found out that his three children were unalive in this conflict. Could you even imagine? And when the eclipse happened a couple days ago, there was someone watching the Wendy app, and right when it happened, this giant vortex just randomly opened up, allegedly near Antarctica. And to document this very 
weird anomaly taking place on Vent 2 Sky. I don't know what this blob is here, but it's coming from what looks like Antarctica. If we backtrack a little bit, you're gonna see it disappear and reappear on the screen. So we move into Monday the 8th, which was obviously three days ago. Watch as we move into Tuesday. This mass pops up with waves of 83.7 feet in height. What in God's name is this thing moving out of Antarctica, as you can see, and then it moves up the coast of Africa into the Atlantic Ocean. Watch this as we move into Wednesday the 10th, Thursday the 11th, which is today. This is going on right now. I don't know if these waves are actually hitting the coast or if this is some sort of glitch in the system, but I've never seen anything like this. This giant blob is showing 83.7 foot waves. This does not seem to be any sort of storm system. Let me zoom back out here. You're right. It wasn't a storm system. It's a massive blob of energy that was conjured by maybe allegedly and we can see that this massive conjured blob of energy is the thing that was screwing with the Schumann frequency when the resonance of the Earth was disappearing the day after the eclipse. Things are getting weird. We believe that CERN caused the Schumann resonance to completely disappear momentarily and then return uh, when it was turned on last. For those of you living on the east coast of the United States, like myself, this is important that you hear. It's important that you go click and watch the video, uh, read the article and everything else that I'm about to tell you. Listen, there is an anomaly that is swimming or moving up alongside Africa and it's expected to possibly breach East Coast waters. Now, I don't know what it is. It's huge as fuck. It's a cluster of waves over 80 fucking feet high, spanning 2,000 miles. This is all real. This isn't conspiracy. This isn't bullshit. This isn't fake news. This is factual shit. Please, if you live on the East Coast, click the link in my profile. Go to the articles tab and read it for yourself or go on Google or your favorite search engine and type in anomaly in ocean in Africa. Stay safe, stay blessed, and stay lit, people. All right, yes, stay safe, stay blessed, and stay lit. But at the same time, don't say it like it's scary, bro. Just tell people they need to go look because if we don't go look, they're never going to you know, realize that this happened. And... Uh, these kinds of things when they happen need to be paid attention to you guys this is so crazy this video surveillance shows an 80 year old nun dragging a suitcase behind her that contained the body of a 58 year old nun i mean look at this <laughs> it's insane so this happened in Ninoa, chile somebody came across the suitcase and noticed it had a really foul odor and so they called police at first, they had no clue who was in the suitcase or how it got there or whatever. They thought maybe it was due to like mob activity or a gang. But then somebody went and watched their own security camera footage and saw this woman dragging the suitcase down the road. So they were able to find out who she was and speak to her. Come to find out the 58 year old nun inside the suitcase had died a year prior due to natural causes. but. They had told each other that they would always take care of each other and be there for one another even after death. Apparently the 80 year old nun whose name was not released had a daughter that came to visit her and was like, hey, you need to let her be at rest. It's just insane. The suitcase had been wrapped in cellophane when the person found it. And police later found out that these women actually didn't belong to any formal religious groups. Like they weren't Catholic nuns. It was just something that they kind of did on their own. But that's definitely something you don't see every day, a nun pulling a suitcase down the road that contains the body of another nun. And according to the report, she doesn't face any criminal charges. That's absolutely wild. I don't know how I feel about that whole like excuse of they said they would always take care of each other even after. Um, no, that just, it's bothering my stomach to think about like, that doing that no just what we've never done this before here's a very big middle east update 
Iran is now saying and coming out publicly that they have a munition that they've never used before and they will use it against Israel if Israel does retaliate. Now, when you dig into what the speculation is, some people are saying it might be a nuke. Some people are saying it might be some sort of hypersonic munition. Regardless, this is what Iran is saying. Now, there hasn't really been a response from Israel, the United States. However, there is a massive coalition right now in the Middle East who seems to be standing together to include Saudi Arabia. One of the biggest pieces of news right now is that Saudi Arabia it condemns what Iran did. But for anybody out there, just because a majority of Saudis are Muslim, a majority of Iranians are Muslim, guys, don't get it twisted. These two countries are not friends. So please be careful when reading into news articles. The Saudis do not support Iran, so it shouldn't be that shocking that they do support Israel in this instance. But again, the big news story is that Iran will use something they've never used before. Mm -hmm. All right, guys, polydimethyl siloxane is the name of the ingredient. It is used predominantly in breast implants. Chick-fil-A uses it to fry all of their foods in, all of their foods. Feel free to research it yourself. Follow me for more tips. Check out my free ebooks up in the link in my bio. All right, I'll go look into that because I do like Chick-fil-A. <laughs> that would be very upsetting. Dubai is completely underwater after they get a year's worth of rain in just one day. Hold on, hold on, hold on. We're gonna look at this first image again, and I'm gonna tell you, the first image is 101% AI generated. I promise. It would have to be some fucking visual to poke through this fake news bullshit. Dubai is completely underwater after they get a year's worth of rain in just one day with all flights leaving being cancelled and people walking around in flooded malls. When you go on the snap right now and look at the snap map, there are people riding jet skis in the street of Dubai because of how much rain has fallen in one day. Also, this is what it looks like when planes are trying to take off. It is literally impossible for planes to even go anywhere because of the massive amount of rain on the tarmac and according to official news sources a year's worth of rain has fallen on dubai in just one day roads turned into rivers and water went into every business imaginable with the tarmacs being completely shut down and nobody able to fly in or out now Airport ceased operations for nearly half an hour on Tuesday as they continue to be significantly disrupted. There is a major flooding on access roads around Dubai leading to the airport. And my friend, the crypto network, is stranded in Dubai right now. I'm trying to mail him out some water floaties so hopefully he can be safe. This is a joke, right? Look, Dubai has been doing this thing where they try to create their own weather ecosystem, all right? They cloud seed out the butt. They cloud seed more than I've ever heard of anyone cloud seeding so that they can control their weather and keep it nice over there. They try their best to play God with their own weather system. That, in my opinion, is why this is happening. Anybody who'd like to look into that, please do. I'm not making it up. Breaking news, NASA has confirmed that an object that flew through a man's ceiling was from outer space. On March 8th, the Florida Naples resident posted on social media that something had flown through his ceiling. At that time, he also shared that he believed the object was from outer space. Here are some photos of the debris. Well, that's kind of scary. NASA then took possession and determined that the cylindrical object was from a cargo pallet containing 58,000 pounds of aging batteries from the space station. The batteries were dumped after a new lithium-ion versions were delivered as parts of the upgraded to the ISS. They said the pallet had been jetsoned from the ISS in March of 2021, according to NASA. However, they expected it to fully burn up during its re-entry into Earth's atmosphere. However, that was not the case and a piece survived impacting the man's home. NASA said, quote, the object is made of metal alloy and weighs about 1.6 pounds and is 4 inches in height and 1.6 inches in diameter. In a statement released by NASA, they said they pledged to find out how debris was able to survive the atmosphere and update on the analysis as needed. NASA said, quote, NASA remains committed to responsibly operating in low Earth orbit and mitigating as much risk as possible to protect people on Earth when space hardware must be released. 
Horrible. That's garbage. Yeah. Garbage. I don't want BS, bro. There is no way that they care. If they're jettisoning old pallets of, of unused material, hoping that it burns up on re-entry into the atmosphere, they are not concerned with safety because it's 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 like that's that's a roulette you know, all in its own to begin with. For them to just assume that like batteries and stuff and that like old equipment is just gonna burn up and not smash into somebody or somebody's stuff, like that's ignorant of them. And it's very like not okay. And like this is just one among hundreds and hundreds of other reasons why NASA needs to be bent over and whooped. <laughs> like I'm not even joking. All right, so I got one more video for everyone. A historic flooding event has just occurred in Dubai. In a 30-hour period ending Tuesday, April 16th, 2024, Dubai received 162 millimeters of precipitation, or about 6.3 inches. To put things into perspective, in a typical calendar year, Dubai sees between 3 and 4 inches of rain. This means that Dubai received nearly two years worth of rainfall in just over a day. Severe flooding also occurred in Oman with at least 18 casualties reported, including a bus full of school children. The root cause of this was an unusually strong storm that developed in the Persian Gulf. Gulf. At the same time, there was a strong blocking high over the Caspian Sea that also extended back toward the Mediterranean. As a result, our storm remained parked in place, and so it had no choice but to sit over the region and just dump a bunch of rain. The Arabian Desert is one of the most arid places on Earth, so a cyclone of this magnitude with very gusty winds lofted a copious amount of dust into the atmosphere. These dust particles become cloud condensation nuclei, fusing together with water molecules and in turn creating clouds and precipitation. Many people on the internet, including some reputable sources, are actually attributing this to cloud seeding, and it is true that Dubai has been doing this since the 90s. It is estimated that rainfall over a very localized area could be enhanced by as much as 25%, but the jury is still very much out on it. While cloud seeding may have exacerbated to at least some extent the flooding in parts of Dubai, it was not the main cause of this event. And the proof is simply that we saw extensive flooding in other parts of the UAE and Oman that do not participate in this practice. They also do this hundreds of times per year, presumably without major flooding. This was simply the case of an unusual weather pattern developing over an area that does not have the infrastructure to combat flooding. Nothing more, no tinfoil hats required. Right, right. No tinfoil hats required. It's all related to cloud seeding, man. It's all related to cloud seeding and how they're not doing it properly and they're pushing it way too much. And eventually, you know, it's going to fight back, especially with the type of climates that they have surrounding them. <laughs> eventually, it's going to slap right back. And I don't care what you think. Anyways. That's all we got for today, everyone. I hope you had a great time hanging out. I know I had a great time watching these videos. I'm glad to be back. You know, I'm still a little bit sore here and still a little bit sore on my knee and my neck. But, you know, it's okay. I'm back. Uh, just released a new album at midnight this morning. So, like, guys, please go check it out if you like drift funk, trap funk music. Like, that's the thing. I'm going to have another one coming in like three, four months, hopefully, if I can get it done. Um, and then we'll go from there and try to figure out what kind of music to do afterwards. Anyways, I hope everyone's been well. I hope that everyone had a great time hanging out. And I look forward to seeing you next time. Uh, go ahead and do me a favor. Hit that like. Hit that subscribe if you're not subscribed already. Share this video with your friends. Leave some comments. Chat it up. I love you guys. Take it easy.